that's a typical film set problem there. Hold for playing. <laughs> Whenever I uh, graduated from MIA, I had two short films uh, under my belt. And the short film that I made in MIA is the one that got me accepted into film school in America. It was the subject that allowed the first sort of spark to develop. Look, Robert, this is a chance to get revenge on the man that killed your daddy. Because I was the youngest in my class, and I think I was the only one who had two short films already. And I have a few good friends out there that couldn't believe sort of the standard and the quality of the stuff that I was able to do in school before even going to the film school. You start off with learning how sound and picture go together when you edit, um, you know, the dialogue on set and sound effects, and you'll, you'll bring in maybe temp music or use a score from one of your favorite films. So learning how picture and sound are married together. We learned Final Cut Pro uh, in, for MIA and uh, learned how to shoot on Canon cameras and things like that. So already going to film school where a lot of other people were starting from the bottom and they, they teach it expecting you to know nothing. So to go into that already knowing how to edit and how to shoot on the cameras and how lighting works, you graduate from it uh, with experience in all areas of filmmaking and you can sort of find out which, which area you enjoy, whether it's in uh, writing or directing or maybe even post-production if you really enjoy editing or sound or you know you get that that opportunity to work in so many different areas that by the time you've finished it you, you maybe actually have a better idea of which area you want to hone in on. People are maybe worried to try it out for the first time but um, I was always a, a creative uh, person in school. I did acting and theatre and stuff like that so I would say anyone who has a uh, sort of creative desire inside of them, even if not necessarily in filmmaking, even if they're into music or they're into acting. I still think MIA is another outlet to be creative. It was actually my film school thesis. It's, uh, it's set in 1979. It's uh, about a young boy who attends a cross-community weekend, falls in love with uh, a young Protestant girl. He's Catholic, she's Protestant. And they sneak away from camp one night and unbeknownst to them they're actually treading towards uh, a British army stakeout that's awaiting the arrival of the IRA. So I don't want to give it away, but that's, that's sort of the, the conflict they're, they're walking towards. Are you okay? What do you think our folks would say about this? I'm Protestant. I know you are. Remember that the IRA are here to collect the weapons, so consider them armed and dangerous. We were in no position to be wrong. What is that? Quickly put that out. Can obviously is one of the biggest and oldest film festivals in the world, so uh, for it to be heading over there into the short film corner is gonna be amazing and hopefully an amazing opportunity to network with other filmmakers and other short filmmakers. So yeah, I can't wait for it. And I couldn't have made the film without my family. Uh, my parents basically single-handedly produced it. My older brother plays the older brother in the film. My sister, Brona, plays Grace. And my younger brother, yeah, he's in it as well. He plays an extra, so yeah, literally everyone was in it. And then I have my extended family of 
my cousins, aunties, uncles, all the costume and production design. It's hard to believe it was my mum and my auntie. Youth for Peace Weekend. Now, I hope you're all looking forward to our first team building exercise, which will be, which will be, canoeing. On one of the days, my the director of photography, Kevin Tracy, stood back and just looked back at everything. He says, you know what makes this film? It's, it's the costumes and the production design. And he works on Game of Thrones, has done a bunch of stuff. And he, he, all the professional crew that were on the film were just completely blown away by the job they did. I think they actually, they raided my <laughs> auntie's wardrobe. Uh, I don't think she's very fond of uh, saying that some of the costumes, because it was a period piece in 79, but some of the stuff came from her wardrobe. I thankfully have a great job out in, in America at the minute and get to shoot commercials and stuff for them. And um, one of the things that landed me that job was the, the experience of cameras and editing. By the time I was applying for jobs to already have had you know, five, six years of experience with cameras and the editing software, um, I think is, is what landed me. I always thought Mar or Northern Ireland would be the fallback if nothing goes right in America, but I think it's starting to switch the other way around. I think America might be the fallback. At GCSE would be a great starting point until already at that age, start to be learning about cameras and lighting and editing and learning a whole new uh, sort of variety of software. And if I was going into an A-level already with two years of experience uh, with it, um, I would say the, the films I'll be making at that stage would be at an even higher level. It's a great starting point for then whenever you, if you want to pursue it further um, or, and try to become, say, a director or a producer. So it, it's all those skills that you need to have. Um, a lot of people say directing a film is kind of just being like a captain of a ship because you're just, you're controlling the cast, the crew, all the different departments and you've got to be able to talk to all those different departments and get everyone on the same page. Um, so they already be learning that in school of how to work together in a team and how you, each different department works and what everyone's roles are and how to bring them all together. It's, it's a great way to, uh, to learn together. Aside from the, the technical skills that you obviously learn in moving image arts uh, through the curriculum, you learn how to you know, work together as a team and how to solve problems as a team. With everything in, in, in filmmaking, I think you just, uh, just got to keep practicing and keep making films as long as... A lot of people would ask me, you know, do you need to go out to America to study? Like, do we, all, do we need to go to film school? And you, you really don't, I think, as long as you're just making films with your friends at the weekend, even if they're just little short films on your iPhone or on a, on a cheap camera, you know, you don't need the, the, the top of the range equipment. As long as you're just uh, learning the craft and getting more and more experience, then when the time comes that you get the opportunity to work on high-end stuff, then you already have the craft behind you and you'll just, your production value will just get elevated.